Hey everyone, so today instead of doing these flows that are a bit more intense for a beginner, I'm gonna take it to what most people think of yoga. This is gonna be more of a chill session, um, but with a bit of an intro that kind of just opens your body and makes it feel good. So there's gonna be some mobility aspects. Some parts aren't what you typically see in yoga, um, but they're within yoga poses. I hope you guys enjoy this. We're gonna be starting in child's pose. So you're gonna find yourself with your hands to the front of your mat, your big toes in the back, knees wide, and your hips are sinking forward hip coming down. And you're just aiming for big breaths here, trying to slow down your heart rate, and just connect yourself to right now, kind of leaving behind whether if you're just waking up um, the rest that you had and kind of finding your way to your body, or if it's the end of the day, kind of leaving the day behind. One more breath. So now you're gonna bring your right arm across your left. And we're just gonna rock back and forth, aiming to bring your right ear down towards the mat. And coming back, kind of neutral, and back and forth. Good breath in. Awesome, so the opposite side. Right arm down, left hand across. I like bringing pinkies together and then just sinking back and forth. That's one. Two. Three. From here, we're gonna bring our hands to a spot where we can raise our chest a bit, bring our knees together. And then bring your shoulders above your wrists. And from here, we're gonna do five cat cows just to kind of get our spine moving a bit. So breathe in, stomach down, look up, and exhale. Mid spine going as high as possible and really exhaling all the air that you can. Big breath in. Exhale, mid spine as high as possible, exhaling everything. Big breath in. This is number four. Exhale. One last one. Exhale. Just to change the direction that we're moving our spine, we're gonna bring our fingertips to our ear. So just having a bent elbow. We're gonna bring an elbow up as high as we can while keeping our spine, our hips, as much as we can just even, so we don't wanna cock out or anything. So hip, uh, elbow all the way up, and then touch to mid forearm. So we're just gonna go, breathe in, exhale down. That's two, three, four, five, same thing on the opposite side. down and we're going to bring your right leg back and then step the left foot forward or you can just reverse that to make it easier step forward first and then lengthen out we're going to bring that knee back down and untuck your toes and then from here we're just going to stay into this pose so this is known as lizard lunge um, you're aiming to have your hip width or outwards just a tad you're going to feel this in your inner groin Nice long spine and your pelvis is coming down. Um, so it's nice and long and it's kind of trying to make its way towards the ground. We could do that by bringing your arms down. If this is really tight as it is, maybe just taking a block and we're gonna do about three breaths here. Be 
because this is a beginner class, we're just gonna keep it here. If you wanna play with different variations, take your time to do so. Um, but we're just doing this with three breaths. So this is our second. And then one more. And just because I'm going into some of my favorite poses together, we're going to go from here to Skandhasana. So we're going to rotate. I know you're getting my backside here, but hopefully this angle does help. Um, we're going to keep the block underneath and then keep our spine straight, nice and long. You can bring it down if that's comfortable, or if not, and you're really high up because you're tight, that's okay. Whichever place you feel comfortable here. If you want to slowly sink in, you're getting into your inner groin. So just enjoy your breath here. Two more. And then one more. And then from here, we're going to rotate and keep rotating until our toes are pointing the opposite side of the skandhasana. And then from here, we're just going to kind of fold into it. So just enjoy the motion of the body. Um, you may feel this on the outer hip or even underneath in the other outer hip. It's kind of a nice pose to play through your entire hips on both sides. Awesome. Release that. We're going to go into our back knee and go into a half split. Toes up, nice long spine. Once again, using our blocks. We don't need to like fold really deep. You're looking to have sensation in your hamstrings and that's it. That's it, about three breaths there as well. Bring your block back, back to tabletop. And then now we're gonna go for the opposite side. So our right foot's gonna come up. We're gonna go into lizard lunge. If you just play, take time, place yourself as needed just to feel the sensation that you want. Um, so if you're very flexible, maybe you can bring that foot forward and that back foot that's untucked a bit farther back. But if you're super tight and you're really high up, maybe you're here and maybe you're even here and that's okay just enjoy where you are today we're aiming for progress through repetition not just one motion where we try to sprint and push through this isn't a grind out type of practice so just about three breaths here once again keeping our spine really long and trying to make our way to get a bit lower and deeper down even if that's just bending our biceps as we, or elbows as we start feeling a bit more comfortable. One more breath. Exhale. This time we're going to turn inwards to Skandasana. So a bit more of a better picture of it this time around since I'm facing you. Um, if you need the two blocks and keeping yourself very high, that's okay. So it's almost like a Kozak squat if you're used to weightlifting or kind of hit interval workouts. You want that spine nice and tall and you're just kind of looking to open. Also, you may feel this on your outer hip as well. I like stacking knee above heel and making sure everything's always lined up. There's different variations, but we're just staying really high up right now, just kind of opening up. We're not stressing anything. More so than that. One more breath. Once again, we're going to release. Walk our hands towards that front foot and rotate, rotate, rotate until we're pointing in the opposite direction. And from here, once again, feeling this on the outer hip of both directions. I also like just kind of reaching back. find a bit more range of motion as you're staying here for a little while. Back to the front, bring that back knee down and toes up, half split. So once again, finding where you need to be today. So nice and tall first and then hinging. Not looking to round the back, 
not looking to push farther than where we're comfortable. We're just looking to bring our upper thigh a little bit closer to our lower stomach, belly button, whichever way you want to think about it, and then keeping good alignment. hands down back to tabletop big breath from here we're gonna flex our toes kind of reach back into almost a floating child's pose and then just slowly bring our right shin across we're gonna go into pigeon pose so as much as we need if we're very tight bring the heel back and kind of enjoy here and if you're a bit more comfortable and we'll have some space for it you can slowly work your way to having your shin kind of making its way towards your arms your back leg should be nice and long and if you want to take away some of the pressure or just make sure you have good form here you can use a block on there it's a big breath here and as you feel comfortable we're going for three to five breaths, it all depends how fast you breathe. Making our way down to your forearms, if that's accessible for you. We'll just do two more breaths in here. Big breath in. Exhale. Big breath in. Exhale. So take that block away if it's there. And from here, we're actually just going to rotate, go into a straddle. So this is a fun place to start. Um, we're just going to make our way to pigeon afterwards on the opposite side. So we're just going to go straddle, reach. We've done this before in one of my other classes. Or you can just have blocks and just fold forward. We're doing this for another three to five breaths. Making sure our toes are pointed up, midfoot aligned with mid and knee. Just nice and comfortable, making your way through the pose. Two more breaths. One more. We're gonna slowly take that block away. From here, instead of just going straight to the other side, we're actually going to bring our leg across, get a nice little twist. So, arm up, so the opposite to the leg that's across. We're going to bring our right arm, bring it to the outside of the knee. Big breath in. So, every time you breathe in, you lengthen your spine. Every time you exhale, you twist. So, big breath in. Exhale. We're going for three breaths here. One more. Slowly release this. So staff pose is when both legs are forward. We're just gonna do a half version of that. Nice long spine. And we're gonna slowly make our way down. Once again, if you want that sit or the block underneath your sit bones, that is okay. If not, make your way here. So thinking lower stomach, upper thigh, and as we feel comfortable, three to five breaths for today. Another thing to learn is with yoga, there's different types of yoga. So um, Ashtanga will be sequences you're learning, you're doing repetitions of very strong. Think of um, very handstand, arm balance, big breath work, um, power type of yoga. One more breath. And from here, we're going to go back to straddle, making our way down. So if we don't need the block underneath our sit bones this time, it's okay. And then there's other yogas such as Hatha, um, which you'll stay in poses for extended periods of time. It's not really a Hatha class. It's not that slow. Uh, Hatha, sometimes you're staying there for like five minutes in one pose, um, maybe longer. It's more meditative. Um, those, those are nice. <laughs> those, are, those are a good stretch. Um, and then there's vinyasa, which is more of a flowy style of yoga. It's less sequency, but it's more of what you'll see me do a bit more of, but um, 
it's kind of more of a dance of yoga. Um, and then there's just plenty of other styles, but it's definitely changed a lot through time. And a lot of people have brought their own spin to it, which I have done. I hope you guys enjoy mine. Two more breaths. Slowly make our way to this side now. So we're gonna bring our right leg across, left arm up, nice long spine as we breathe in. Exhale, twist. Once again, bringing the leg on the inside. Nice long spine. We're gonna to reach towards the single leg and then just hinge forward. So once again, I'll just show you what the difference would look like here. So I'm hinging, this is where I'm comfortable. I'm pretty tight. Um, and that's just from life, body, sitting, running, everything else. But the difference will be, so this is me, comfortable and nice long spine. With the block, I'm able to really hinge with a lot more ease and make more of the way, more length into that pose. Definitely feeling this a lot more in my hamstring and it feels comfortable. It doesn't feel like I'm straining. One more breath. Awesome, I'll take that away. And then from here, we're actually gonna bend our left leg and bring our right one to the back and rotate into pigeon. Side over here, nice long spine. Once again, if you want that block underneath, that is fine. Adjust and modify as you need. I think that that's actually um, a very intelligent way to practice. It's not, it doesn't bring down your point skills or anything of that sort. There's no real such thing. You gotta listen to your body. Um, if you are doing a lot of physical activity that's demanding, you may just need more assistance. And that doesn't make you less of a practitioner of any kind. Once again, if you're making your way down, Go for it. We're going to go for three more breaths. Just two more. One last one. From here, we're going to rotate back to the front of our mat. And we're just going to do one last staff pose. So we did a variation of single leg. Now we're going to do both. Um, you may notice that one side is tighter than the other and because of that you're not going to go as far as when you have single leg and that's completely fine. Just listen to your body. Go to where you're comfortable with. I'm going to use the block here. So once again hinging lower stomach, upper thighs and just finding some length. Big breath. And if you're here and that's, that's as far as she goes, that's okay. There's no stress in that. Two more breaths. One last one. Awesome, so we'll take that block away. We're gonna do two last poses that are quite a bit more chill. Um, there's going to be two different variations. So we're going to go to happy baby and then we're going to do a figure four type drill or kind of a lay down cow face. Um, so happy baby, we're just going to go on our spine, grab the outside of our feet and slowly make sure that our lower spine's always grounded and you're slowly just trying to bring your knees towards your armpit or the ground behind you. So big breaths in. Exhale, long breaths out. Just three more. Last one. And for one last variation on both sides, we're gonna go and bring our legs into almost a four shape if your legs were like this. That's why it's kind of called the figure four. And then you can either just reach through, grab your knee like you may have done in sports, um, or 
touch it, grab wherever you're able to, um, or lower in the shin just to get a bit more length. Still making sure that our lower spine is on the ground. So this is variation one. And then if you want to grab your foot and able to do this, grab the base of the other foot, keep both flex, and then still really aiming to just hinge. So the whole point is lower stomach towards kind of groin area. You're thinking of everything collapsing towards the toe. This is quite a bit more intense than the other variation. But if you're able to make it here, that's another story. So just be comfortable and happy with where you are and enjoy practicing there. Three more breaths. One more. We'll release that, go to the opposite side. I'm just gonna do the figure four on this side just to show the difference. Big breaths in. Okay, so that's the end of the class with me today. I hope you guys enjoyed this more chill version of a beginner yoga class. Um, and from here, we're gonna go for Shavasana. I'm just gonna do five breaths because that's kind of been the rhythm I've been going with. But if this is where you're done, that's okay. Thank you so much for practicing with me. I hope you take it long for new classes. Otherwise, palms up, eyes closed. And we're just gonna go for five breaths. If you need more, stay here and keep going. Um, so yeah, eyes closed and just with every breath in, just allow your lungs to expand and take in all that good energy and then as you exhale, let yourself feel a little heavier every time. So just feeling that diaphragm expanding, your stomach getting bigger as you breathe in. As you exhale, just feeling heavier in the legs. Here, from the calves to your ankles, just kind of feel everything grounding. Now, if you can feel everything behind, from your sit bones to your lower back, everything just kind of digging in a bit more. They're just getting heavier and heavier. A few more breaths. Now just enjoying this in your shoulders, on your chest to just feel like it's opening. That was the last one. If you feel like you just want to keep going and relaxing, awesome. And if not, and this is it, um, thank you so much for joining me. Cheers and namaste.